Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Pita Bread. That's right, by popular demand, this is the pita bread that you saw in the tzatziki video. And unlike lots of other baked products, which are quite frankly better from a bakery, I mean, remember the time you tried to make croissants? Ouch. But this, on the other hand, is so far superior homemade than the stuff you get at the grocery store, it's not even close. And in addition to being delicious to eat, it's also extremely easy to make. So we're going to start by putting one package of yeast in the bowl of our stand mixer. To that, I'm going to add one cup of very warm but not too hot water, and then one cup of flour, and we're going to give that a good mix. And I'm going to let that sit there for about 15 or 20 minutes. So basically, we're doing kind of a very quick sponge here, but mostly we're just making sure that our yeast is active. And 15 minutes later, if you see it bubbling like this, you know you're good to go. It'll start getting a little foamy, kind of like the head of a beer, although that's not a very good analogy. But you know what? I just like comparing things to beer. But anyway, when you see those little bubbles, that means your yeast is active and you're ready for the next step. So at that point, we're going to go ahead and dump in some olive oil and some salt. By the way, this dough is actually very similar to our pizza dough recipe. So go ahead and mix in the olive oil and the salt. And then we're going to add the rest of the flour, but not quite all of it. All right, this is going to take about two more cups of flour, but I don't like to add it all at once. A supple, moist, sticky dough is very important here. So I'll add like three quarters of the rest of the flour. Of course, we're going to use the dough hook attachment. All right, I'll give it a mix, and then I'll take a look. And as you can see here, definitely too sticky, still sticking to the sides of the bowl. Needs more flour. So at that point, I'll add a little at a time until I have the perfect consistency. And what that is is just enough flour to make it pull away from the sides and form a very, very supple, very soft, slightly sticky dough. And when it gets to that point, you want to let that knead for at least five or six minutes. And again, you can always add flour, much harder to add liquid. So that's why I don't like to dump in all the flour. Okay, so after five or six minutes of kneading, mine looked like this. By the way, my hands are lightly dusted with flour, and that feels amazing. You can tell when you've done a dough right, it just feels incredibly supple and sexy. At that point, I'm going to add a few drops of olive oil to the bowl. All right, I'm going to oil the surface of the dough. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover this with foil and let it double in size. That should take around two hours. Although no guarantees, might be a little less, might be a little longer, but you're going to check. All right, so that's what mine looked like, doubled in size. We're going to remove that from the bowl onto a floured work surface. Go ahead and sprinkle some more flour on top. And then we're going to press it down with our hands, and this is for two reasons. Number one, we want to knock all the air out of it. And number two, we want it into some kind of flat shape that we can cut eight pretty equal size pieces. So that's what I did here. And once you've cut your dough into eight pieces, you're simply going to form these small round loaves. Now, don't stress out too much about this. You could just roll these into a ball if you want. But the official method is to kind of pull the dough from the top down and tuck it up underneath the bottom. So I'm just turning the dough. I'm kind of stretching the top with my thumbs, tucking it up underneath. And I'm just going around and around. And what you'll get is a nice round shape with a very smooth top. And that is it. All right, once your eight little rounds are formed, you're going to cover that with some plastic wrap and let it sit there for about 30 minutes. And 30 minutes later, it's going to look like that. Yes, they will rise a little bit. And you can see my plastic sticking a little bit. You should probably oil that first. I forgot to tell you. And at that point, we are ready to roll our pita breads. So I'm going to take one piece of dough. Again, I'm using a floured surface. I'm going to pat it flat. A little more flour on top. Not too much, just enough so it doesn't stick. And then we're going to roll that out to approximately a quarter inch thick. And by the way, I'm just going to roll out one to get started here. And as they're cooking, I'll roll out other ones so those are resting while I'm actually grilling the first ones. So that's just about perfect right there. And then the last step before we grill these, I want you to let that sit there for five minutes. And you'll notice I'm covering the other dough with a towel so it doesn't dry out. All right, so once your rolled out pita bread has rested for five minutes, we're going to head over to the stove where I have a preheated cast iron skillet on medium high heat. It's been lightly brushed with olive oil. And we're going to place in our pita bread, and we're basically just going to grill it for two to three minutes per side. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to go a couple minutes on that side. I'm going to give it a flip, cook it a couple more minutes on that side. And then I'm going to flip it back over to the original side. And you're going to see something that hopefully you see in your pan. That would be the puffin. All right, both sides are going to kind of separate in the center. And it's going to fill with hot air, and it's going to puff up. So I'm just giving this another 30 seconds or so on each side, mostly just to show you the puffing. So that's completely normal and desirable. And after it's cooked for about three minutes per side, and hopefully you got a little bit of inflation, we're just going to pile those up on a plate as we cook them. 
And that's pretty much it. Now, what you just saw would be fairly typical of what you're going to see in your pan. Although once in a while, you're going to get this. That's right. The full balloon. Some of them will just separate perfectly in the center. And you'll have one big air pocket. So that's kind of like your best case scenario. And I should also add that you don't have to flip back and forth as many times as I am. I'm just doing this to show off my extreme puffiness. And by the way, don't get discouraged if you don't get the full puff. You'll see when these are done, the insides are going to look great anyway. So whether you get partial puffage or full inflation, you're going to be fine. And these are going to be delicious. So bottom line, if you grill both sides for about three minutes and it gets kind of blistered and golden brown like that, you're good. That's all you need to do. And once you've cooked your pitas and they're cool enough to handle, you are done. And you are about to experience one of the great bread products in the history of the world. And you can see here as I tear into one, how those layers have separated in the center. And you get that signature pocket. And by the way, this was the original hot pocket. So it all started with this. And of course, the great thing about pockets, they're fun to fill. And for me, it was tzatziki on this day. But I'm sure you'll have no trouble whatsoever thinking of things to stuff your pitas with. Oh, and by the way, if there's a couple listening in the audience by the names of Mary and Paul, you guys should quit your jobs, buy a food truck, sell sandwiches made on this bread, and call it Pita Paul and Mary's. That is a million dollar idea right there. So to Paul and Mary, I say you're welcome. And to the rest of you, I say I really hope you give this delicious homemade flatbread a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.